all traced on, all the colours are chosen. I've just made a little bit of a start on um, our puppy's nose, just to make sure that I've got everything in the right place. Um, so I've made a, a little start here just by going over the lines. I've studied my black and white picture that I've got here and I've studied the best photo on the photographic paper here. And um, because it's quite small, I'm going to try and work um, all over it rather than just, if I was working on something big, I'd start here and kind of work across like that so that I didn't worry about leaning on the work, that kind of thing. But really, there's not going to be much leaning going on here because it's, it's such a small picture, really. So I'm going to put the glass scene over. Um, so when I'm doing things like the nose, I can really lean on that nicely. OK, so I'm all ready to go. Um, so I, I think, see these little, I don't know if you can see these tiny spots. They're actually the corners of the drawing to give me a guide as to how far I need to go up. A lot of people draw a line on, but then I think it, it doesn't really give you, if that line comes through your pastel, um, like I noticed recently on one of my pictures, uh, it's, it can be quite difficult to get rid of it. If the line is, is not quite in the right colour or whatever, I don't want to take that risk. So I'm going to colour the background and I'm going to do it a green. So we're just going to get a, try and get a nice sort of even background. I'm not going to go into any detail. Uh, personally, I don't really like a lot of detail in the background. I think the focus should be on the animal, really. Um, so, yeah, this is our little Yorkshire Terrier puppy. He's rather gorgeous. And uh, let's get going. Okay, so we need to put the white on first, and then any colours that you put over this won't be too um, harsh. Just gives it a base. I know I like colour, but this would be mad green if I didn't put the white on. It would be like a cartoon type green, and it's not really what I'm looking for. So you see, I've used those little black dots where they are, just to let me know that, um, you know, it's, it's just kind of going in here a bit. Maybe a touch in the back there. Just to let me know that I need to go over those black dots and then it will be covered. I'll, I'll be sure that I'm over the area. I think this is, I'll check, but I think it's seven and a half inches by seven and a half actually now gone over the line there, not concentrating. So that that bit of pastel there, I'm gonna take that off with a bit of putty rubber, just an opportunity to show you how I'll just wipe that off actually with a bit of a paper towel. This is how I'd go about it. Now the black would probably go over there fine, but just for for your interest, uh, that's how you would kind of go about getting the colour off. Just kind of flatten it out. See how it's come off on there? See that? Just don't rub hard, you don't need to. But you can see it's just take it all off. Then, to make that disappear, you just do this, squeeze it like that. Then, the best way to get colour off really in a patch like this is to flatten it out. Just do that. And really, if this was vital, you would just keep doing this until eventually you could see no white there. But I know that will come off with black. 
black over it and it'll be really dark. So I don't need to go mad, even though that's off the, that's off the edge of that actually. Okay, so that's that. Oh, see, there's always an opportunity everywhere to use to show something. So mistakes can be very useful. That's how we learn. That's how we learn from our mistakes. And um, I've done made plenty of them, I tell you. Still, um, as you can see. I wonder if you can see this on the camera. I think you might be able to see some something. Okay, so now I'm just going to smooth this in. And it, there's not much of it, so I think I could do this with my finger. Let's just see how it goes. I often don't use the background. Uh, uh, I, don't, I often don't use a colour in the background. I use the colour of the paper usually. But this is such a lovely green and bright green. And I wanted the colours to come out really strong on this. This is why I use the white pastel mat. So that the really reds come out really red. And I want it looking really bright and gay. everybody's cup of tea I know but this is what I like to do and I thought if I'm going to be doing this videos and showing people how I work this is how I work um you know this is it's for this is not only for your benefit this is for my benefit too I want to be able to enjoy this and uh, get a lot out of it and I want to be able to pick, pick pictures that I really like um, that I know are going to make a good picture rather than People say, oh, I want this or I want that. You know, if, if, it, if I fancy it myself, I'll do it. But if I don't, I won't. Because, um, you know, I've got, to be, I've got to be enjoying this as well. If I'm not enjoying it, then it won't be such fun for you. Okay, so just get as close as we can. And then I'll use the little blender tool on the very edge just to make sure that I've got those that base right in right in there. This is very light. I'm not pressing hard. This is very very light. So. You know, the lighter you are, if you've got any pads left on your fingers, mine are a bit flat now, um, then you're using your pad of your fingertip to as a tool. And I think that this is one of the best ways to blend pasta with your fingers. Some people put gloves on for doing this. Um, which is, is fine if you want to work with gloves. It works really well with plastic gloves actually, this. It really does. Just the disposable plastic gloves. I think I've put a picture of those in the materials list that I made. Just, you buy them in boxes. And, you know, you can use them over and over or you could just use them and throw them away. It depends on you, how you're fixed and what you want to do. Okay, so I'm going to use the, I'm going to use this little blender just to get near into the, these are so soft, these blenders, you can actually feel the grain of the paper, you can feel it going over the grain of the paper, I couldn't even feel that with my fingertip, they're so, the end of this is, is wiggly, see, so there's no pressure in it at all. I think that's the idea of it. It's not meant to be hard, otherwise you wouldn't be able to, to blend like this. It would just it would just poke into the paper, I suppose. But this is blending really nicely up into the rear, very edge. 
which is great. And then we're going to be going over this, of course, with his hair. We've got to put the green on next. Yeah, this is working well. blended nicely into the paper up there so now you can actually see what's happened here a lot of people don't like using white pastel matte because using white over it, it it gives it a yellow look and you can see that it has it seems to have turned the white cream so this is still looks white and the white looks cream which is is really right but it doesn't matter because we're going to be covering over. And we'll still get a nice light base under the green. But it is a thing to consider. The white cats I've done, I've done plenty of them recently. I've done, I've done three white cats recently. Three Maine Coons. And um, I've done them on the pale blue or grey colour pastel mat, and the white has come out really lovely. It's really white. Just going over little bits here. I can see, just could do with going into the paper a bit more. still here. It'll be a treat for us all when I get my new board, my new easel. I haven't had time to look for one yet. It's actually quite difficult to get a board, an easel, um, to go and have a look at them and try them out. You can get one on the internet anywhere you like, but if you want to try one out, I haven't really found anywhere that's near us here. I can just go and look at them. Well, the only place that's near us here is where I bought my uh, travel board from, and um, I don't want to go there again. Uh, I mean, it's a lovely, it's a really good shop, actually, very, very good art shop, but I don't want to go the, um, the cheap easel route, that's what I mean. I'm going to probably spend a bit more and get a nice one that keeps still, and likes to be worked on. Oh, happy day. So yeah, I'll be, in a couple of months time, I'll be 68. And, um, Coming up to that milestone of being 70. I know it's a couple of years off, but I'm getting nearer and nearer, and it's getting, goes faster and faster. Time's going very, very fast. Which is, you know, kind of why I want to do this, really. I want to, I want to do it while I feel I can. And, you know, I am enjoying it very, very much. It's a bit, definitely a good decision for me to start doing this. Definitely the right decision. And I will get better at the videos, I just have to practice. Uh, but while I'm practicing, uh, hopefully you'll, you'll uh, be able to get something from it. And it might give you a bit of a laugh here and there as well. Hopefully it will. <laughs> hopefully it will. There's nothing funnier, I don't think, than watching somebody and then them making mistakes. <laughs> it is funny, isn't it? So, hopefully, you'll get a bit of a laugh. It's not the end of the world, is it, if I make mistakes. See, I feel okay about this, because I'm not charging for these. I'm not charging. So, if I was charging, 
I feel a big pressure to make it really, really perfect. And I knew that wouldn't work for me. I knew it wouldn't work. And I love the idea that I could just get on with the pictures, really enjoy doing them. You'll, in, you'll hopefully benefit from them. It's good. It's good all round. It's really a great thing. Okay, that's it. So, um, there's a little bit, a little bit here that needs coming in a bit there. It comes in quite close there. See, this is what I mean, you've got to keep looking at your picture. Okay. 